Welcome to the review of the Ambernic RG35XX Plus. Now this is a follow-up to the very successful RG35XX released about a year ago. And as you can see, things haven't changed that much, at least in terms of the design. But what's far more interesting is what changes Ambernic has made under the hood. The Plus now has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, a larger battery, and some beefed up specs. Now these changes did come at a cost, we do have a small bump in price. The price jumps from $51.99 to $63.99, which is a reasonable ask when you consider the improvements overall. The one other major thing to consider is that Garlic OS, a popular custom firmware that was released for the original RG35XX, is still in development as of this release anyway. So we are stuck with the stock OS, at least for now. So at some point you might be wondering, is this worth the upgrade? Or if you're interested in this as your first retro handheld, then how well does it compare to some of the reasonably priced competitors like the Mio Mini Plus, the RGB30, or the original RG35XX? Well, let's jump into the review and find out. So let's start out with the unboxing experience. I ordered this one directly from Ambernick and it took exactly a week to get here to my doorstep. I live in Ontario, Canada, so I imagine if you live anywhere in Canada or the US, you may have a similar experience. Now do keep in mind that Ambernick does tack on an additional shipping fee. So with that additional cost, you're looking to spend just under 80 US dollars all in. In the box, you're getting the device itself, some cleaning wipes, an instruction leaflet, a screen protector, and a USB-C to A cable. Taking a look at the device itself, the one thing that I immediately noticed when holding it for the first time was how much more comfortable it felt in the hand. It was immediately apparent that the back trigger buttons felt so much nicer to hold than the original. That's because of the nice slope of them compared to the original. The other reason, which was not immediately obvious, was that Ambernick rounded out all the edges of the device, so it isn't as boxy. This makes it feel a lot nicer in the hands. Other than these changes, the design felt very familiar. And if you like the original design, I think you will appreciate the similarities here. So let's take a closer look at the device. Starting at the back, you now have these nice, more ergonomic buttons. As you can see, there's a slight angle to them now, which does improve the feel in the hand from the original. We also have a cutout here for the battery. This does take away from the clean look of the original, but we can now easily access the battery unlike the original, which essentially you had to take the entire back of the device off to get to the battery. This brings it closer in line with the Mio Mini Plus, which also had the ability to replace the battery without a full teardown of the device. Definitely an improvement here. On the left, we have a volume rocker. There's a slight change here. They added a small divot to the middle. Again, just a subtle change over the original. On the right, things have largely stayed the same with the power button and the reset button and the two TF card slots. Now, if you look closely at that reset button on the new device, you may notice that it's been recessed just a bit more. This makes it just a little bit harder for you to accidentally press it, which is a nice improvement. At the top, we have an HDMI out port. Now this becomes far more useful with the inclusion of Bluetooth, as you can now use the Plus with your big screen TV and a controller. Whereas the older non-Plus model did not have Bluetooth, which largely made that HDMI out port useless, as you had to use the device itself as the controller. On the bottom, we have a USB-C for power and a headphone jack. Finally, let's take a look at the front of the device. Like the original, we have a 4x3 640 by 480 resolution IPS screen, which has some great viewing angles. It's comfortable enough to play in the dark, although I do wish it went a little darker. But it does get plenty bright for daytime gaming. The other thing I really like that they did on the Plus model this time around is that they went with a clean black bezel which I really think improves the design and gives it an edge-to-edge -edge feel. This makes it look more like that Mio Mini, which also had that edge-to-edge -edge look. The D-pads are classic Ambonic rubber membrane pads, which are always solid for this company. This time around, they have slightly smoothed out the edges, making it more comfortable overall. You will have no issues with platformers or fighting games here. 
To the right, we have the four face buttons, which honestly feel the same to me as the original, but no complaints there. We also have the menu button and the select and start buttons. Now the select and start buttons have been moved down and angled a bit more this time around. Finally, we have the single speaker grill on the bottom right. Again, there is a slightly different angle this time around, but it sounds the same to me. So as I mentioned in the intro, the specs have been improved for this device over the original. I'll put this up on the screen if you care about that detail. So as you can see, the Plus gets an improved GPU and CPU and four times the RAM of the original. You're also getting a larger 3,300 milliamp hour battery versus the original 2,100 milliamp hour. What that translates to is about eight hours of real world use versus the six hours of the original. The other thing of note here is you're getting Bluetooth connectivity. So this allows you to connect any of your favorite controllers, including Xbox and PlayStation to the device. As I mentioned before, this allows you to game on one of your big screen TVs untethered. With the introduction of a Wi-Fi chip as well, you're also introducing retro achievements and the potential for over the air updates of the operating system. I was really hoping by the time I did this review that Garlic OS would be out of alpha. Unfortunately, no luck there. We do have the option now for Min UI on this device, but I haven't played around with it enough to recommend it or not. Maybe I'll do a separate video on this once I have a chance to do so. Like and subscribe below if you want to see that one. We do have Stock OS, which comes pre-installed on here. It's a functional, not a fantastic experience, especially when compared to Garlic OS, or Onion OS on the Mio Mini. It is better than what I remember on the original RG35XX, and I'm sure Abenik has improved it quite a bit since then, so this allowed me an opportunity to take a look at it again with fresh eyes. Just be aware that if you're coming from a 35XX with Garlic OS, or a Mio Mini with Onion OS, you're taking a bit of a downgrade here in terms of user experience. So let's do a quick walkthrough of the stock OS. The first menu item is called Game Room. This is where you get your standalone emulators. I honestly don't use this one as much. I prefer using the RetroArch version of the emulators, and I'll show you that next. Moving over to the second menu item, most of the emulators in here are launched through RetroArch. Any ROMs that are on your SD card will show up in here. You launch any game by selecting the console or handheld and then selecting the game. Next up is your favorites. You can add games to your favorites by going to the game and once selected, hitting the start button. Next up, we have history. Any games that you have launched previously will show up in here and can be relaunched from this menu. Next is search. This is a really useful one. You type the name or part of the name of the game and it will show you a list of the titles in your library that match the query. And finally, you have settings. This is where you can find the options to connect to your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and turn up that annoying menu sound. There are some useful shortcuts that you may want to take note of when playing games on the RG35XX Plus. To save a game at any point, press the menu and R1 button. You can then reload that save at any point by pressing the menu and L1 button. To navigate between save states, press the menu and left and right on the D-pad to go back and forward between save slots. To fast forward, press the menu and R2 button. For slow motion, press the menu and L2 button. Any consoles or handhelds that worked on the original 35XX also perform good or better on here. So all your 8 and 16-bit systems like the NES, Genesis, Super NES will perform really well here. In fact, you can now emulate up to and including Dreamcast games and even some PSP games perform really well on here. Do keep in mind that you are limited to just using a D-pad. So any games that require an analog stick for Dreamcast, PSP or N64 will not be playable on here. You can get around this by using a Bluetooth controller, but just be aware of that limitation. I would highly recommend just looking at these as a bonus rather than specifically purchasing the Plus for any of these systems. 
The device is capable of getting most DS games running and performance is quite good. Unfortunately, here again, it is being held back by the hardware as it isn't a touch enable screen. Most games I tried had no issues, but your mileage may vary as once again, I would not purchase this assuming you can play your favorite DS games. Look at DS emulation on here as a bonus, not as a reason for picking up the Plus model. So if you're looking for a system that can play games up to PS1 much like its predecessor, and you do not currently have a Mio Mini Plus or an RG35XX, then definitely consider this one. If you want an RG35XX with a bit more power that can play a selection of PSP, N64, Dreamcast, and Saturn games, then yeah, this one should be on your short list. Just don't buy it for these systems. If your intention is to primarily play games from any of these systems, then you are much better off looking at some of the other sub $100 devices like the RGB30 or for a few more bucks, the Retroid Pocket 2S. If you're trying to decide between the Mio Mini Plus and the XX Plus, then that one is a harder decision. I personally prefer the Mini Plus, as it paired with Onion OS is still one of the best user experiences in the retro handheld space. On the other hand, the power and future potential of this handheld cannot be denied. Either way, I think you will be happy with either purchase and the XX Plus is a solid system that I rather enjoyed despite its shortcomings. So let me know what you think of the RG35XX Plus. Did you purchase one? Are you looking at an alternative handheld? Comment below and let me know. If you like this review, check out the review I did on the RGB30, another solid budget retro handheld. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.